Hey everybody, Jason here again with Engineer Essentials. Today we're going to be covering a bit of a broad topic, and that is why use GD&T. We often get a lot of questions from our students asking, why would I use GD&T over coordinate dimensions, or in what specific scenarios should I be using GD&T in? We'll try and cover that with a basic example of something like a bicycle wheel. We all know that the rounder a bicycle wheel is, the smoother the experience will be. So how do you define how round that bicycle tire should be? Let's take a look. The wheel's roundness, or amount of up and down movement as a spin, is considered its radial trueness. This radial trueness will control how bumpy your ride will be. As you can see here, the deviations in this tire have been exaggerated for visual purposes. As a general guideline, a millimeter or less of radial deviation is acceptable measurement. So how would you show that on a drawing? Likely, you'll list nominal dimension and give it some sort of tolerance range that would be allowed to go up and down since nothing is perfect. But what locates the center of this diameter? How far off the center can it be? What if we want to control the location of that diameter tighter than we want to control the size of that diameter? For instance, what if the tires or the treads that go on this rim have such loose manufacturing tolerances that it does not make sense to hold the rim at such a tight size tolerance. Most tire tolerances are very loose and depend on many variables such as tire type, manufacturer, intended rim pairing, tire diameter, tire pressure, and many more. Diameter tolerances for larger tires like this can be found at five millimeters. So why would we hold the diameter of this rim to plus or minus half a millimeter when the tread that we put on it actually accepts a much larger deviation? To save manufacturing costs, the tolerance of this diameter on the rim could actually be opened up to something more like 1.25 millimeters. How do we accomplish this with coordinate dimensions? Well, if you're using GD&T, you would just use a symbol like this. It's called runout. Here you see 576 diameter with a plus or minus 1.25 millimeters, which is much bigger than the plus or minus 0.5 millimeters we had before. But now you can control that radial deviation with a runout of one millimeter. You are now meeting the functional requirements of the design without adding any unnecessary tight restrictions. Here you see a truing stand where you lock the axis of the tire for reference and rotate the tire so you can check the radial deviations with respect to that center axis. That's known as the datum simulator in GD&T. We hear a lot of GD&T myths here at Engineer Essentials and I'd like to take a second to address a few of those. First off, we hear often that students are worried that if they use GD&T, that it'll end up adding cost to the part. Well, we saw with this example that we were actually able to open the size tolerance of the rim diameter while maintaining the form control or the radial trueness of the rim to less than one millimeter using control known as runout. Next, we often hear the argument that coordinate dimensioning is inherently easier to understand and it's able to do everything that GD&T can do. Well, we just proved that by only using coordinate dimensions, the only way to ensure the radial deviation is held to less than one millimeter total is to use a tight diameter tolerance of plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. So it's not able to separate size and form like the GD&T control is able to do. Not to mention that by checking the radial trueness using an indicator on a truing stand is how someone is supposed to inspect runout anyway. We often find that our students are already inspecting the parts using GD&T controls without even knowing it. And lastly, we have seen students only use GD&T when parts are critical or high volume. Again, using bike tire as an example, we see that the truing tire is not a high volume operation and is often done as quick maintenance task. It's not critical in the aspect that it's going on an airplane or the International Space Station, but yet we see that GD&T helps us better understand the functional requirements of this part. Remember, the core purpose of using GD&T is to make sure that the part functions properly. This is carried out in design, production, fabrication, and measurement and inspection. If you design using GD&T with the part's functionality in mind, then the part will be produced and inspected in the same manner. GD&T will communicate exactly what is important for the part to function. No more, no less. Be sure to visit the website, check out our additional free resources, here you can test your knowledge with our print reading and GD&T quizzes. You can also download helpful wall charts and access articles written by our training experts.